and gentlemen, and welcome to RTC TV Forum. My name is Dakota Hayden, alongside with Blair Zimmerman. How you doing tonight? And we'll be your co-commentators for tonight's girls varsity matchup between the Caston Lady Comets and the North Judson Lady Jays. Absolutely. So I've uh, been talking to various members of the Lady Comets program and, and Coach Helmick, and uh, evidently, Dakota, North Judson, uh, the North Judson Ladies are ranked number five in the state. Wow. And they have a freshman who is the number one ranked freshman in Indiana right now. Really? So, ought to be some really exciting basketball tonight. Hopefully some good clean basketball tonight. Right. So, um, now we, we do have some roster adjustments on the Lady Comets bench. Um, anybody who was watching Saturday would have seen uh, Brianna Hubenthal uh, take a hard tumble on Saturday. Um, I did just see her out and doing warm up so hopefully she'll be on the court today. I believe I was told though that she's only cleared for two quarters of gameplay tonight. Uh, so Lady Comet's already down a really good ball handler. And then also from Saturday's broadcast, um, we saw that really hard flagrant foul by Lane Oliver. Uh, she's out for a one game suspension this evening. So um, the Lady Comets down a very ag aggressive ball player who is um, pretty good on the scoring side of things. So it should be an interesting matchup tonight. Um, obviously, we wish uh, quick healing to Brian Hubenthal. And um, yeah. So uh, also, I've been informed that uh, out in our viewership, we are being joined by quite a few North Judson fans nationwide. So, good evening to you, or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. And uh, we look forward to seeing what your ladies are bringing to the hardwood tonight. Should be a pretty good game from both sides. Absolutely. Clock's ticking down, and it looks like we got the uh, Comet Choir out here to do the pledge for us this evening. Anthem. Anthem, <laughs> yeah. Lady J starting lineup. Number 12, Macy Reinbold. Number 24, Adeline Harper. Number 32, Lillian Frazier. Number 44, Madeline Schumacher. And number 50, Lauren Cox. Lady J's head coach is Chris Neubauer. 
taking over. Starting lineup for the Caston Lady Comets. Got number 14, Brandi Young. Number 21, Ashlyn Klein. We got number three, Aubrey Digg. Number 11, Emily Holt. And last but not least, number 35, Jordan Klingler. Lady Comets are coached by Don Helmick. Absolutely. Um, and between the varsity and JV games tonight, we did have the uh, senior night celebrating our two senior ladies on the floor and our uh, exchange student uh, manager, who's also a senior. I, which of course are seniors being Brianna Young and Ashlyn Klein. Ashlyn Klein. I do not recall the name of the... Uh, uh, Emma Herter. Uh, Emma, Emma Herter. She's Emma from Herter. the Netherlands. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. And uh, speaking of Coach Helmick, real class act, we saw that he had actually included the Lady J's two seniors getting a gift for them. I, I just thought that was outstanding, uh, an outstanding demonstration of sportsmanship. That was awesome. That was, that was definitely awesome. All right. Well, Jordan Klingler posting up for the Lady Comets tonight, and she got her hand on the tip. That's going to go Blood. out. Out of bounds for the Lady J's there. Oh, no, we're going to re-tip. I don't know that I've ever seen that in any of the matchups I've watched. I can't recall it either for me. Lady Jays will get a hold of it this time around. Out of bounds off of number 32 there, Liliana Frazier. And I'm not sure that she's not that number one rated freshman. Um, oh. Somebody told me that, that the, the young lady was really tall, and she is the tallest of the three freshmen that they have on the roster. We'll have to find out as the game continues. Holt with the pass to Young to put up for a two. Nice, nice open jumper there for Kasten to um, strike first. Or Judson. Wow, wow. Three-pointer just like it was nothing. Is that that 32? Is that are the Lady J's freshman right there? Uh, th that might be. I asked Coach Helmick earlier. I said, uh, so are the... Uh, I said, is North Judson one, uh, an inside team, an outside team? What, what can we expect tonight? He said, they are whatever they want to be. Ooh. This should be for an interesting matchup because we're not really so sure what we're going to see. Klein getting into Klingler, put up for two. Just off of the mark there. As the Lady Jays run it down to their court. Ooh, that was a hard hit. Ref's not calling anything, though. They got a hold of it but ended up losing it. Got swiped from her. And Holt with the rebound. Holt crossing the mid. Looks like she's going base. Oh, that was out of bounds there. Off, I believe it was uh, number 50, Lauren Cox of the Lady Jays. Holt was looking for Young. Ended up sending it out of bounds. Or well, bouncing think, off a defender. I was trying to say, I think she was looking to just get rid of it before she went out of bounds herself. <laughs> Holt getting it back to Young. Young trying to pass it into Klingler. Couldn't quite get it on that pass. Lady Jays crossing over the mid, heading back to their side of the court. The double dribble. It was on, was that the um, number? That was number 12, 12, Macy Reinbold. Klein checking the ball into Degg. Degg sending it over to Holt. Keeping it on the other side of the mid. And over to Degg. And 10 second violation. It's going to go back to the Lady Jays. It's uh, the first time I've seen the Lady Comets struggle with that. But if you'll recall back a week ago this past Saturday, uh, in the West Central matchup, the Comets really struggled to get it past the full court press. And they had a 10 second violation. Right. All right, that was number 50, Lauren Cox, putting another two points on the board for the Lady Jays. Holt getting over to Degg to cross the mid. Lady J's defender getting a hand on that pass, but still able to make it to Holt. Holt sending over to Young. Young looking for some help. Gets it over to Holt there. Holt looking for Klein. 
Klein trying to send it into Klingler. You know, uh, today, through the day, I was able to talk to Allie Weezy, and uh, I asked her what, what her perspective was on the game tonight. And she said, you know, honestly, if we keep our heads in the game, keep our heads up, we have the, the opportunity to come out victorious on this. Ooh, three-pointer there from number 32, Lillian Frazier. And yeah, she airballed that one. But Allie said, Allie was saying that they, they have that, the, the prospect that they could walk away victorious tonight. And, and I said, well, from what I've seen up in the, in the press box, it's going to come down to a lot of those fundamentals. Um, and good passing being that, that foundation there. Right. It, the Comets, unfortunately, have had a bit of a struggle with that in the past few games that we've watched. Absolutely. And actually all season, to be 100% honest. Absolutely. Well, speaking of fundamentals, and which makes me think strategy, I see that we've got a 30-second timeout. So we're going to go for a word from our sponsors. Thanks for joining us on RTC TV4. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, personal property, and outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice data and video connectivity for the 21st century. Online at rtc1.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank. Online at firstfederalbanking.com. We're back and the ball is back in play. Aubrey Degg passes it over to Klein who belts it over to Emily Holt. Get to Klingler, she attempted for two, just a bit off. Lady Jays, the number 32 looking to go all the way. Off the back of that rim. Young getting a hold of it and sending it over to Klein to pass over to Holt. And Holt trying to get into Klingler again. Lady Jays will knock that one out of bounds, keeping it in common possession. Just icing the play there a little bit. Young looking for someone opens and send it all the way out to Holt. It's really strange seeing a uh, a first quarter without Brianna Hubenthal or Lane Oliver out there. Yeah, but uh, for Brianna Hubenthal's well-being, you know, I'm I assuming they're going to use her for either the second or third or third or fourth quarters here. Absolutely. Strategize. Absolutely. She's been cleared to play as. Um, as able. So out of bounds there off of uh, Jordan Klingler. Seems like the Comets are, or the Lady Comets have been implementing a strategy. Don't take too many outside shots. Pass it in to get it to uh, Young or Klingler to get up for the two. You know, and, and if you can if you can reliably get that into the post, those are a lot higher percentage shots, let's face it. Yeah. And then the Lady Jays will come out with a three like that. And Absolutely, extend their lead to 10 just halfway through this first period. Yeah, like you said earlier, it's the fundamentals that are really mattering here. Klein. Oh, she needs help. Trying to get over to Aubrey Degg. Didn't quite make it. Overshot Degg there. And the Lady Jays capitalized on that. Aubrey Degg a little slow to get up off that. She's She's got a limp going on. Grimacing a little bit there. Klein getting over to Degg and back to Klein. Klein launching it over to Holt. Holt trying to get into Klingler. You're absolutely right that they they keep sending that to the post. All right, some substitutions out here. We have uh, number 22, Sophie Jellison, coming in for the Comets. And I think I saw 22 go in for the Jays. That was uh, Abby Tim. And I'm not sure who... The third or the other Lady Jays player was it was who came in. 
Had a five second violation there. Trying to inbound the uh, Lady Jays, just playing really smart, clean defense. Uh, where, where it's coming to uh, preventing the Lady Comets from getting the ball where they need to to prevent some violations. Putting up another three-pointer. Number 32 for the Lady Jays is on fire. Absolutely. That's got to be the freshman that everybody's been talking about. Lillian Frazier there. I've been told that so far this season she is averaging 27 points a game. Wow. And with nine points at least on the board at this point. I, I don't doubt that. There she goes with it again to pop up for two. A little off the mark there. And she's just a freshman, Dakota. So she's going to have three more years. I can absolutely see her being one of the leading uh, lady basketball players in the state, possibly having her choice of whatever college she wants. Yeah, it's impressive for sure. Young. All right, tight coverage down there. Yeah, the decline, Klein trying to get to Klingler at the post again, out on the Jays. The Lady Comets are having to do those overhead lobs to get it past the defenders. Holt getting over to Young. Young going to Klein. Klein to put up for two. And it's good. Lady Jays looking to retaliate, popping another three. Just off the back of the rim. Out of bounds off of the Lady Jays. And I see number 24, Allie Wheezy coming in for Jordan Klingler. Allie Weezy very often critical at the post, so just, just serves to reinforce what it looks like from our vantage point, the, the comment strategy is this, this evening. Klein, or Jellison actually, saw the two, forgot which one it was. <laughs> and we had a double dribble there on the Lady Jays. If we could go back and look right here in the media booth, I think what we would see is uh, Sophie Jellison. She stumbled there and just had to kind of do that under underhead and basket pass. And Brianna Hubenthal now in for the Lady Comets. Um, for anybody who missed last Saturday's matchup, uh, number one, you might hear me talking about how smart and respectful this basketball game is looking. That matchup against Winamax Saturday was just brutal all the way through. Yeah. Klein with for two off the mark and the Lady Jays getting the rebound. Um, but we had with those incidences with uh, Hubenthal and with with Oliver and for anybody who missed that it was exciting basketball to watch. You definitely need to after this matchup's over head to rtc4.com and just watch that uh, Lady Comments versus the Lady Warriors from this past Saturday. Crazy with the two. From the post. Lady Jays popping a three. Nothing but net. We got to get something going here. Got to get covering on definitely number 32. She's making 100% of her three points, uh, three point shots. Uh, at least to think. She might have no, missed no, one. She, she's, she might have missed one or two. She's definitely. But she, at that, she should be like oh, yeah, they, they priority number one for coverage. They, they definitely need to make sure that somebody is on her out of that line. Pops it over there to number 44, Schumacher, and she drills a three as well. 40 seconds left in this first quarter here, and uh, we see a 19-point deficit for the Lady Comets already. Jolson looking to lob it over to Wheezy. Try and get it up for two, just off. I doubt. I, that block, I don't know how clean that was, but the refs didn't see it. It didn't count. Ooh, that one they did yep. see, however. That's going to be a foul on Klein. She's going to send number 44 there, Madeline Schumacher, to the line. I think this is the longest we've been through a game before the first foul was Absolutely. Gone. First foul on the board tonight. And that shot was off the mark. Aubrey Degg coming back in, substituting in for Emily Holt. Holt looks a little flushed coming in. She had missed uh, quite a few games. The second shot was on the money, by the way. Holt had missed quite a few games due to illness, and uh, she looks like she's still not quite 100%.
Klein getting over to Degg. Degg sending it over to Hubenthal. Hubenthal in trouble now. I guess something <laughs> moving. We got. And backcourt back violation by. there. 0.9 seconds on the board for the Lady Jays. If they can kick that over there to Frazier, she might be able to put three more on the board before the quarter's over. You know that's who they're going to look yeah, for. Yeah, that's Dan. what they did. Ooh. It was just off the mark, though. So we close out the first quarter, 26 to 6. Lady Jays advantage. Well, we'll be back here in just a few moments. I'm going to step out for a word from our sponsors on RTC TV4. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, personal property, and outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice data and video connectivity for the 21st century. Online at rtc1.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank. Online at firstfederalbanking.com. All right. We've got uh, an elementary uh, basketball, late girls basketball over here. I wish I'd have known that they were doing this or we wouldn't have yeah. gone commercial. And the varsity ladies heading back out on the floor. While we're getting underway, I also want to uh, remind everybody in our viewership that the Winnemac uh, High School Band, ooh, between the legs and Allie Weezy puts it in for two. Nice Winnemac Community, our High School Band director is working on reassembling a community pep band. I guess it was a, a common occurrence to have around here. For the three, it was good. Common occurrence to have a community pep band and the goal is to practice once a month until next July. And they're going to play several patriotic songs before the 4th of July fireworks in Winnemac. Uh, I was told it doesn't matter who your alma mater was, uh, or really even your playing ability, you just need to have an interest in music. And if anybody is interested in joining this pep band, uh, you can contact either the front office at Winnemac High School or the band director there and get more information. All right, Hubenthal with a long two. Just off the mark. Slightly Maybe. off Klinger on the rebound. Send over to Klein, Klein's popping a three. Still just off Wheezy on the rebound. Drawing a foul, she'll go to the line for two. That'll do it. Foul was on number 12, Macy Reinbold. That's her first and the team first. Have we been to a game this year that we didn't have both teams with the foul on the board by the end of the first quarter? I, not that I can recall. First shot's good. Let's see if Valley can take him into double-digit territory. What's up? Not just off the front. Off the front of that rim. Lady Jays now. Over to 32. She was open at the three-point line there for a second. Oh, Degg just couldn't quite get a hold of that. And oh, off with the three. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. 44 now. She's just off, off two. And that's uh, number 44 there. That's junior Madeline Schumacher. 6'1", according to the roster. Tallest, tallest member of their team. 
And she's been really dangerous from the three-point line tonight as well. And at 6'1", she's actually the tallest lady we'll see on the floor tonight. Dig making a pass around to Uventhal. Uventhal putting up for two. Under heavy coverage, Klingler with that rebound. She just barely... Can't barely quite get a hold one. of it. Lady Jays get that rebound. Lady Jays looking for an opening for three. Off the mark, and Lady Jays do get the rebound. I did notice that uh, Aubrey Dagg, she's getting right out there on uh, Frazier, making sure not to give her as many opportunities this quarter. How many three-points she's hit so far tonight, I wouldn't blame her. Got to keep an eye on her. Klein now with the ball. On the pop along too, Off or maybe mark. pass it to Wheezy. <laughs> oh, Wheezy misses that rebound. So the ball go back down to the Lady Jays court. We're gonna drive in. We had a foul called. Foul was on number 21, Ashton Klein. We have Lady Jays number 50, Lauren Cox coming back on the floor. Subbing in for Madeline Schumacher. The Jays. Oh. Had an open. On the rebound going up for two. They had an open three. Missed it. We well, got I'll that tell two. you, if, if I was uh, Ashley Reuter in there, number 14, I, I would just called that an arcing pass. Right. Nice screen set there by Ashley Klein to let Aubrey Day get across the half court line. Three-point attempt by Brianna Hubenthal went off the front of the rim. Trying to go up for the shot. That was clean block. Uh, they did go to shoulder to shoulder on the way up. Ref didn't call anything on that. It went out of bounds on Ashland. And we have a timeout called. So as per the norm, we're going to let them talk strategy. We're going to step away for a word from our sponsors. Thanks for watching tonight on RTC TV4. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, personal property, and outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at EvansAgencyRochester.com. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice data and video connectivity for the 21st century. Online at RTC1.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank. Online at firstfederalbanking.com. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, we're about halfway through the second period. You can see that, by and large, it's been all Lady Jays tonight. That shot attempt, though, not quite enough on it, and the Lady Comets get the rebound. Over to Huventhal. We're going to go base. Blocking foul on the Lady Jays. Ooh. Brianna's a little slow to get up. Again, she's uh, she had some whiplash off of that fall on Saturday. So we're just not sure how she's going to do tonight. And we see that Emily Holt is substituting in for her. Hopefully she's back on the floor this evening. We'll see how it goes. Don't want to take any chances. Nope. Ooh. Bad pass on the way in. We ended up with a foul on the play. Foul was on 35, Jordan Klingler. That's her first, team third. Now we're racking those fouls up. Now yeah, it's seeming like a normal game. Lady Jays on their side of the court and make something happen, get into the post. Too much up on that jump shot. Jordan Klingler gets the rebound. She had to fight for it a little bit though. Dag with the ball, crossing the mid with it, sending over to Klein. Fine for three. 
Off the money, Klingler with the rebound, hits the bottom of the rim for that follow-up shot. Eddie Jay's taking it out, gonna make it Comet Ball. Klein getting over to Dag. Dag giving it over to Klein. Klein steps out of bounds as she's trying to get around the defense. I'm a little surprised that the Lady Comet, ooh, three-pointer just, just off the mark there by Frazier. I'm surprised the Lady Comets aren't playing a little bit um, a little bit closer defense as the Lady Jays cross the midcourt line. Yeah. Pass to the inside. Looking for a two, maybe. Ooh, Ooh. Clean stuff by Ashlyn Klein. Klein needing help, gets it over to Dag. Dag sent into Wheezy, put up for two. There's two. Two points from the post. Puts oh. the Lady Comets into double digits. Yeah, Still with a 20 point deficit, however. Lady Jays now. Going to make an opening to Frazner. Trying to get those open threes. He's going to go in for a two. Off the mark and Wheezy with the rebound. Lady Comets pass it around a little under the basket to clear the defense out. Clyde launched it over to Holt. Holt looking to go in and maybe try and pop up for two. Oh, yes, and she drew a foul. Ref's calling it a shooting foul. He's going to send Emily Holt to the line. Foul was on number 24, Adeline Harper. That's her first, team third. Her shot's just off the tip of the rim. And Lady J substituting in numbers 22, 44, and 20. That'd be... Abby Tim, Madeline Schumacher, and Courtney Trusty, respectively. Second shot. It's in. That was textbook. The first one was just to line it up, that's all it was. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a mortar. The first one's a gauging shot. <laughs> yeah. Lady Jays. 24 is open for three. A little short. Ashlyn Klein fighting that rebound away. It's over to Dag. He's going to send it back to Klein to get it over the half. Klein trying to get into Klingler. Down to the post. Weezy able to save it to get into Klingler. She needs help. I don't know if she was trying to jump up and do a Klein pass. Klein and or, or what, but got it stripped out from behind her. Lady Jays now. Trying to drive in pup two. Off the back of the rim. <laughs> Open up for three. Courtney Trusty there. Turns around and just had a wall of Ali Weezy right behind her. <laughs> Holt making a run for the money. Oh, pancakes on that. And that's going to be Lady J's ball. Sophie Jellison subbing in for Jordan Klingler now. Emily Holt coming up to meet Adeline Harper there at the line. Looks like the Lady Comets may be playing a switching man-to-man -man defense now, breaking their 2-3 zone. And we have Coach Chris Neubauer calling a timeout. So we're going to be back here in just a moment on RTC TV 4. Welcome back. Come back just in time for the Lady Comets to go take possession of the ball on the, or no, excuse me, Lady Jays to take possession of the ball from the ref. <laughs> Minute 30 left in the first half tonight. Lady Jays keeping on the outside of the arc, trying to get something moving. <laughs> the 
22 over to number 20. Exchange it back and forth. Trying to get it in to the post. Pop up for two. That was good. Just at the top of the paint there by Matt, or Lauren Cox. I'm not allowed to mix and match names off of the roster, am I? No. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't work like that. Klein lobbing it over to Holt. Holt. Ooh, Holt out of bounds there. It looked like holding, but the ref didn't call it. It doesn't happen. Right. They get full say of what happens. We might not agree, but that's not our job. Correct. And if we argue with it too much, we get invited to leave. True. <laughs> Lady Jays across the midline now. Trying to get it. We're looking to try and get it inside the post. Ooh, Aubrey Degg just about getting that interception. Not quite forcing turnover. I'm looking to paint for two. Madeline Schumacher with that short jumper stretches the North Judson lead 35 to 12. 18 seconds left now in this half. Dag with the ball, trying to launch it over to Weezy. Couldn't quite make it on that pass. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Sophie Jellison wrapping it up to cause a jump ball. That'll still be Lady J's possession, however. And Lillian Frazier coming back in, as well as Macy Reinbold on the Lady J's side. Hmm, 10 seconds left. I think Frazier's going to try to put three more on the board right before the half. Wouldn't surprise me. Or oh. maybe two. Close. No cigar. Didn't quite make it there. Ref saying that final buzzer beater doesn't count. It, it went in, though, there. Valiant attempt by Macy Reinbold. Well, that's the first half in the record books, ladies and gents. You can see on the board there. North Judson winning 35 to 12. Only three fouls per team. Fairly, very clean first half tonight. So, well, 10 minutes to go until the second half starts. We're gonna step away. We're gonna hear some words from our sponsors. Please, please come back tonight for the second half. And we'll talk to you then. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff of Peterson Wagoner and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, personal property, and outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at EvansAgencyRochester.com. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice data and video connectivity for the 21st century. Online at RTC1.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank. Online at firstfederalbanking.com. And welcome back to tonight's coverage of the Lady Comets hosting the Lady Jays. We've got about a minute and a half until the second half gets underway. I can only imagine the strategy sessions in the locker rooms as we see the Lady Comets with a 23-point deficit. Well, hopefully whatever they discussed in the back, uh, Hopefully something to get the to get the tide turned around here. I mean, mostly what's been affecting them so far tonight has been just the passing game alone, honestly. Absolutely. And and the the heavy coverage by the Lady Jays. Lady Jays playing very smart defense. Um, making sure that they've run a man-to-man -man coverage basically all night long. And the Lady Comets struggling to answer that. True. Of course, let's face it, you don't get to number five in the state without playing some smart basketball. True. So, I mean, we already kind of expected to see this from the Lady Jays. So. Absolutely. And I really feel like the, the Lady Comets are acquitting themselves well considering the fact that they're 
one and a half players down, if you will, since they, they're not able to play Brianna Hubenthal to the extent that they usually would. Right. Uh, she would have played, I, I would say she would have ordinarily played at least 12 out of the first 16 minutes. For sure. And then, of course, Lane Oliver being out for a one-game suspension for the flagrant technical foul on Saturday. And with that inbound, the second half is underway. Klein getting the ball over to Degg. Degg going over to Young. Young back over to Klein. Looking for an opening, probably going to Klein for the long two. And she gets it. That was a nice shot there from that corner. Lady Jays now taking the ball back to their side of the court. Ooh, and Emily Holt intercepting that pass meant for Lillian Frazier. Unfortunately, when she tried to get rid of it, she sent it right back into Lady J's possession. Kickball, Holt. <laughs> Running out of bounds, giving it back to the Jays, but stopping whatever uh, movement they were going on that play. Ball back in play. Now, I see that once again, Lady J's opening in the half with both 32 and 44. That's Lillian Frazier and Madeline Schumacher out on the floor, both of which showed themselves to be very dangerous from that three-point line in the first half. Lady J's passing it around, looking for an opportunity, and, and there's there Frazier is. just off the close side of the rim. They're able to keep the ball in their possession. Frazier going in Ooh, a bit to send it back a, out. That's kind of a shove there by, uh, by Klingler. Looks like we got a freebie on that one. <laughs> a little bit of a off pass by the Lady Jays, giving it back to the Comets. Lady Jays putting on the pressure with a, a press now, though. Klein to Dag. Dag sending back to Klein. And we've got a timeout by casting coach Don Helmick. Don't go away. We'll be right back here on RTC TV 4. All right, strategy session over. We're back. And Klein to check the ball into Deg to get it back into play. Back up to Klein. Double <laughs> Klein coverage. just about passed it back to Deg. Would have been a backcourt violation. Holt trying to get into Klingler. Ooh, nice, nice swipe away there by Lauren Cox. And textbook layup there by Madeline Schumacher. Right into coverage. Holt passing it over to Dag to get it over the mid. Dag looking for someone trying to get it over to Klingler or Klein. Either one would have worked. Ball went out of bounds off the Lady Jays though, so Lady Comets will retain possession. Klein getting into Klingler. She tried to put it up for two. Didn't quite have the ups to get over Lauren Cox there. Layup by the Lady Jays. There'll be two more on the board for him. Holt send it over to Degg. Over to Klein. Klein launching it, trying to get over to Klingler. Lady no Jay's good there, and that, that little underhand pass that they did would have been a good opportunity for the Lady Comets. Lady Jays, however, capitalizing on a rebound there, put it back up for the two. And those have been some fairly nice passes there. Klingler for the lay-in. It's going to go. Thought that was out of bounds off Klingler. Looks like we got another uh, freebie. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Flying to check it back in. She's looking for someone open. Send it over. Trying to get to Holt. Ball's on the Lady J's side. Dag with it. That was just a race to that ball. Dag over to Young. Young back to Dag. Trying to get something moving. Someone needs to get open here. Young getting the ball. Dangerous. Close to a backcourt violation. Dag with the really with the long two. two and drawing the foul. She'll go to the line for two. Uh, 
I was saying earlier, uh, Deg by far the, the shortest player on the floor, which doesn't by any means make her the least. If she can keep tight control over that ball while she's dribbling, it'd be impossible to steal from her. Very true. Very true. And an upper second shot. Just bricked off the front of the rim, and Lady Jays with the rebound. Lady Jays launching it all the way over to their side of the court. It's in the post. And it looks like we had a steal there, and looks like there was a trip there. Uh, yeah, number 12, Macy Reinbold called for tripping Emily Holt. That's her second. Team second. Yeah, giving over to Klein. We'll cross mid with it. Klein send over to Young. Young in trouble now. Young Is handing it off back to Klein. To Klein, yeah. Klein, I'm thinking she was going for Holt. I think so. She didn't have nearly enough on that. And just a textbook crossover pass for an easy layup there by the Lady Jays. Again, that combination of Frazier and Schumacher on the floor is just, they're both good players inside and outside as we're seeing tonight. Fine for three. Just off. Off the mark of Frazier with that rebound. And again, crossover pass to Schumacher. And Frazier draws the foul as she's going up for the follow-up. Foul is on Lady Comets number 35, Jordan Klingler. That's her second, team first in the half. Frazier going to the line though. And the shot's a little off the mark. Not to uh, question her skill because she's definitely shown it here tonight, but that's kind of surprising considering all the you know three-pointers she's made. Right, the threes, some in the paint shots. But again, Dakota, we're looking at a freshman player down here. Uh, true. So right. she she's basically about two thirds and makes that set makes that second shot to redeem it. She's what two thirds through her first varsity season, and we're seeing skill like this. Uh, even as a Comets fan, I feel like Frazier is going to be an exciting one to keep an eye on across these next three years. Yeah. Right, Ashlyn Klein, Klein. jump shot off the mark, and Frazier with that rebound. Over to Schumacher for the lay-in. All right, Deg looking to see what move she's gonna make to bring it across the midcourt line. Decides to do it herself and still looking for her opportunity. Over to Klein. Klein trying to get over to Wheezy, I think. And uh, Schumacher gets a hand in on it. Drives down for the layup, good for two. The Lady Comets are going to have to see what they can do to break that Frazier to Schumacher pass for, for a layup. Or, I mean, it's already a devastating score, 48 to 14, but that's going to be just excessive. Klein with three just off. off the mark and Frazier with the rebound. They're on the arc, popping up a three, Lady Jays. Just short, and they get on that rebound. Well, yeah, that was uh, Lauren Cox with the rebound, and I think it was Sophie Jellison. Nope. Nope. 24. That's Allie Weezy. Just had a hold of her arm while she was shooting. I'm going to send her to the line for two. That's Weezy's first and team second in the half. Those shots just off the back of the rim. And we see Jasmine Rudisil substituting in for Ashlyn Klein. Second shot off the mark and Wheezy with that rebound. It's stolen right out from her. And uh, uh, Frazier drawing the foul there. Foul was on number 11, Emily Holt. And she was trying to do something to stop that layup. Good shot, off, shot the off the back of the rim. Two more substitutions going in. We have number 14, Ashley Reardon for the Jays. Number 35, Jordan Klingler for the Comets. Now I'm looking at the at the Ross or the lineup that, that Helmick has 
second shot good there. Uh, looking at the lineup that Helmick has in there, we've got Russell, Jellison, and Dag in there. I feel like we're getting ready to see some scrappiness out there on the floor. I'm feeling it. Let's see if the comments got planned here. The lineup looks good for it. Holt, you check it in. Over to Jellison. Calling it out. Has to be what it is. Her heel must have been right on that sideline. Unfortunately, it's really hard to see from our position because we've got the uh, the Comets bench in the way. So, all right, Frazier over. Gets over to Schumacher, who passes it back to Frazier. She sure. keeps faking like she's posting up for that three and then doesn't. The DJs to find an opening there. Keep fooling me. <laughs> nice screen assist there by Dag as, as Rudisil ran into a pick. Frazier. That was an up and down. We've got a travel there on Frazier. She couldn't quite get rid of it while she was still in the air. Sometimes, though, you get away with that. The ref's not quite paying attention. Only sometimes. This time, nah. <laughs> it's like we got a timeout. Timeout by casting coach Don Helmick. Stay tuned here on RTC TV4. This broadcast brought to you in part by these local sponsors. The lawyers and staff of Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service to their clients presently and for the future. See a full list of services online at peterson-wagoner.com. Evans Agency in Rochester, offering farm liability, personal property, and outbuilding policies, all customized to fit your insurance needs. Let Judy help you protect all of your possessions. Online at evansagencyrochester.com. Stay connected with the fastest internet speeds available with RTC Fiber Communications. Voice data and video connectivity for the 21st century. Online at rtc1.com. First Federal Savings Bank is your local mortgage lender with six locations throughout North Central Indiana. Trust the professionals at First Federal Savings Bank. Online at firstfederalbanking.com. <laughs> All right. Lady Comet's already on the hardwood. Lady J's talking strategy here. 135 left in the third quarter. And as you can see from the scoreboard, it's been primarily a North Judson ball game tonight. Lady J's taking position. As Emily Holt accepts the ball from the ref and gets the game back underway. The Holt trying to get over to Jellison. Jellison fell out of bounds as she caught it. Thinking it was off of Lady J then. His Holt's there with the ball again, getting over to Rudisil. And we get it in bounds this time. Rudisil about loses it there on the dribble. Does that time. Manages Holt. to get it to Holt though. Holt trying to send it into Klingler, ends up getting it to Jellison, so that'll work. Jellison going up for two. Lady J is still playing Frazier and Schumacher in there. They've been a deadly duo tonight. Schumacher for that bank shot, puts two more on the board. Less than a minute remaining here in the third quarter. Dag. And sending the ball over to Rudisil. Rudisil trying, trying to get the hole intercepted by Frasier. And she lays it in for two. Dag looking for an opportunity here. Tries to utilize a pick by Holt, and uh, the defenders trade off. Dag sends it back to Holt with 10 seconds left here in the third. 
Holt's sending it to Jellison. Jellison going to Rudisol. Rudisol double coverage. Less than a second now. And that'll be it. That's the third quarter. Well, we'll be back in a moment here. Stay tuned on RTC TV4. All right, we are back to start this fourth quarter. Ball in play for the Lady Jays. Lady Jays. Representing over, keeping on the arc. Looking for open threes, I'm guessing. Holt. Kick there by Holt. I mean, I could say, I could make a joke and have it seem like she doesn't know what sport she's playing, but I'm pretty sure it's on purpose. So I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, and worst case scenario there, just broke the flow. All right, in the paint. No good. They're going to call that a foul for two shots. I'm sure that foul was on Jordan Klingler. <laughs> Ref's waiting on her, the Lady J to get out of the way, and yes, foul on Jordan Klingler. That's the team fourth, Jordan's third. First shot's up and in for Lauren Cox. Second shot. Textbook, nothing but net there. Lady Comets deciding who's gonna bring it across the midcourt into the arms of the waiting Jays. Day getting over to Jellison. Jellison gonna give it over to Klein. She needs help, gives it over to Jellison again. Jellison gonna drive base to try and get into Klingler. Klingler manages to get it. It was went off the legs of the Lady Jays. Let's send it back out to Klein. Klein gonna try again to get it back into her, can't quite get it. Klein. Klein will put it up herself. All right, that'll work. That was some heavy defense in the paint by the Lady Jays. Lady Jays now popping up for two. Short jumper off the far side of the rim there by Macy Reinbold. Klingler was on the rebound, sending it to Klein to give it to Degg. Degg gonna send it over to Jellison. Jellison driving to the baseline, bounces off the defender, gets it into Klingler, and can't quite put enough pressure onto the ball to get it to the rim. Lady Jays now. Lady J is still playing that, that Fraser Schumacher duo on the floor. Ooh, Jellison got her hand on that pass. Lady J is able to recover on it. And Fraser with the layup. Stretching us to a 39 point lead for North Judson. Dig, trying to get it over to Jellison. Lady J is quite intercepted. Do it there. Yeah, intercepted by Reinbold. Out of bounds off of Aubrey Day as she tries to get that ball back. Substitutions now. Allie Weezy coming in for the Lady Comets. Number 22, Abby Tim in for the Lady Jays. Schumacher for two. That was just real nice situational awareness there. Caught it up high, quick hop up, put it right in. Holt going for two. Back to the Lady Jays to cross mid. Lady Comets look like they've gone back to a 2-3 zone. Schumacher with another short jumper. And uh, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised that didn't, that they've switched away from that slightly tighter defense, given the uh, Lady J's room to get some maneuvering in, and Coach Helmick calling a timeout, possibly to talk about just that. Well, stay tuned. We'll be back here in a moment on RTC TV Four. And welcome back just in time to see the Lady Comets inbound the ball. A hold, giving it to Wheezy, going up for two. Uh, just a little short. And the Lady Jays getting that rebound. A bit of a fight for it over. Yeah, ended up with a foul on Allie Wheezy. 
That's her second. Looks like team fifth. And here we are almost halfway through the fourth period. Neither team having guaranteed bonus shots for the other. It's just been a relatively clean game of basketball all night long. Unless, of course, you count the slaughter that is the scoreboard. Uh, well, we won't, we won't pay attention to that, though. We won't pay attention to that, though. Lady Jays to restart it over on their side of the court. Ball in play. Emily Holt looking to get rid of or get a hold of it. And I'm definitely seeing a lot more movement out here by the Lady Comets. I don't know if we've switched to a uh, a switching man-to-man -man coverage or if we just have a couple of key players that we're going to put pressure on. But Either way. It's definitely changing up the dynamic out here on the floor as the Lady Jays having a little bit more of a struggle to move that ball around. It's keeping them on their toes, making them definitely, as you said, struggle a bit, and that's good. As we've had two out of bounds here, they've been off of the Lady Comets, not resulted in a, in a turnover. But it definitely interrupted whatever play the Jays were trying to pull uh, Correct, off. yeah, we're not seeing the ball just, you know, into the paint and up. It's inside shot there. It was off the mark, and quite the struggle for the ball. I'm not sure who that foul ended up on. Uh... Foul was on number 11, Emily Holt. That's her second. Lady Comet sixth. Lady Jays. A nice bounce pass in to try and get up for two, but yep. she'll draw the foul anyway. Yep, Allie Weezy fouling there. That'll be her third, team seventh, and it was a shooting foul anyway. Abby Tim going to the line for two. Lady J is now sitting in bonus territory now. First shot was off the mark. Same with the second shot. Sophie Jellison getting that rebound. Klein getting over to Holt. Holt crossing mid, looking to go up for two. The client will just take it, put it up for two herself. That was a nice, uh, nice save there by Ashlyn as uh, Emily Holt tried putting that up with I think three of the Lady Jays having a hand on that ball. Holt able to intercept the pass made by Lady Jays. Fiddling with the ball a little huh. bit. I'm surprised she didn't get called for a travel on that, Dakota. I am too, but I think she kind of just let it bounce and just kind of didn't touch it for a, for a good second there to kind of. Yeah, foul ended up being on Lady J's number 12, Macy Reinbold. We have number 14, Ashley Reardon, substituting in for number 12 there. Couldn't see if that was a 12 or a 22. Jelson getting over to Weezy to put up for two. Weezy there from the post. Lady Jays. Looking to get someone open. Number 14 out, back out to the arc. And popping up for three. Right on the money there by Abby Tim. I definitely see where Coach Helmick was coming from when he said they are what they want it to be. They are. We've seen several players dangerous from the arc. We've seen those same players inside playing in the paint. Interceptions on these passes. Lady Jays on the rebound, still trying to put up for two. Took it out. Out of bounds there off of Ashley Reardon. We see number, Lady Jays number 42 coming in. Uh, I'm gonna have to guess that's Natalia Gebka. We don't have a 42 on the varsity roster.
Holt giving the decline for a long two. Off the mark. And that's probably gonna be an over the back foul there on Allie Weezy. Yes. And that'll be her fourth. She's now in foul trouble. With only two minutes to go though, I don't know how much trouble that is. However, she will send number 42 to the line. Shots up, it's, it's good. good. She'll get another one. Second shot off the rim. Jellison with the rebound, sends it over to Young. Over to Holt, Holt will take it across the mid. Handing off to Jellison. Jellison giving over to Klein. Klein lob it into Weezy, put up for two. Oh, both sides of the rim, no good. Jellison now for two. Weezy though, she wasn't. She knew she wasn't going to be able to get a good hand on it for that rebound, so she bats it out to her teammate. And Lady Jays is bringing it to their side of the court to put up for an easy two. Yeah, nice, nice uh, fake there by Abby Tr or uh, excuse me, Courtney Trusty. Fakes it, lets all the defenders jump up, try to block it, and just go sailing past. Then she just has an open short jumper. Fine. Over to Weezy. Weezy up for two. She'll get it for two. That's what she was trying to do last time. Just over one minute left in the ball game here. Lady Jay's passing that ball around. Seeing if they can't get into a position to extend their lead a little more. Trying to get a hold of a rebound, couldn't get it. Young will give it over to Klein. And then Klein over to Holt. Across mid once again. They'll send it over to Young. Young then back over to Holt. So pretty obviously at this point, though, the the last that last fall that uh Brianna Hubenthal took must have tweaked that neck again. She hasn't been back in. Mm -mm. Let's hope for a speedy recovery before the next Lady Comets matchup. And we do see number 12, Ginger Slisher. And number, number three, Aubrey Number three, Degg. Aubrey Degg. I didn't see who the second one is, in was, and they've already set up for their inbound. Also had a couple substitutions on the Lady J side. Holt passing over to Degg. <clears throat> 33 seconds left. Take them back to Holt. Holt looking for someone. Trying to send into Wheezy, just a bit over her head. Lady Jays now, 20 seconds. Ten seconds. Passing the ball around. Double coverage. And that was gonna be that's gonna be a foul. Ref's calling one to one. I don't know. That's on Allie Weezy. That'll be her fifth, taking her out of the game with just under six seconds left. Ashlyn Klein coming back in in her place. <laughs> Gebka. First shot off the rim, Holt getting it. Four seconds left, and gets called for a double dribble. And she's limping, Dakota. I don't know if she tweaked a knee when she was trying to bring that in or what. Not sure. And it looks like we have 22, Sophie Jellison, and number 13, Olivia Boldry, coming in and taking our seniors off the court for the last seconds of the game. And there it is. Well, definitely a fairly one-sided game tonight, Dakota. North Judson Blue Jays coming out very, very much ahead, 67 to 26. It's definitely, I can, I can absolutely say there that Lillian Frazier lived up to the hype that I'd heard leading up to this matchup all day long. Absolutely, and the Lady Jays definitely proving why they're number fifth in the state of Indiana. Absolutely. Congratulations to the Lady Jays tonight. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight on RTC TV4.
Please come back Friday as we watch the uh, the Guy Comets play host uh, for Caston's 50th anniversary celebration. Uh, should be exciting and hopefully see some good basketball. Until then, I'm Blair Zimmerman. And I'm Dakota Hayden, and we'll see you all next time. Come back again. Watch us. RTC TV4. RTC4.com to watch any previous recordings. Good night.